What's up, Matt Pratt here, and tonight we are back on the Supra. Yes, last week we actually knocked out the rear bumper of the Supra. I made it fit. This thing is fiberglass aftermarket. It's cheap. It's the only thing available quickly um, that I've been able to get my hands on, so I had to make it work. And if you can tell, we did some persuading on it. Um, now that we got the bumper to fit pretty good, we're going to jump on working on these quarter panels. Um, I wanted to make sure I had the bumper fit just so I had something to make the quarter panels fit to. So that is going to be our next step. And hopefully, it doesn't take me too long. Okay, so I just did a little bit more fitting up, um, more precise fitting up. Like, um, so this bumper is supposed to have a bracket that goes on the edge of this bumper and it mounts to the uh, quarter panel like this with bolts. I don't have that bracket. I'm gonna get that bracket. Um, I've just been forgetting to order it. So what I did, if you can look in here, I actually put some push clips in there to attach the bumper to the quarter panel for now. And um, it should work. My gap is pretty damn close. Um, I can w work off of this and build off of this. And then when I put that actual bracket in there, I can line it up exactly how I fit it up before. And if not, I might just have to um, work a couple of the holes and get it, give me a little bit more room to play around and then I'll eventually get the line up. So, in other words, I can get it back to this fitting point after I put the bracket in. I'm not worried about that. Um, so anyways, so now we can work on this. Um, if we look at this side, tail like that looks great. This looks even better, you know? This side, not so much. It's a little in right here. Um, it's a little in right there. That's okay. Uh, this is fiberglass. I'm going to grind this out, fit my tail light in there, make sure I get that back, and then we'll build this up with more fiberglass to get it flush against the quarter. So we rounded out the edge a little bit. The tail light actually fits 10 times better. I'll pop it in there real quick and show you. Um, gap looks great down here now. And as you can see, it's pretty round. Um, I am gonna stick some fiberglass in there to really smooth it out. It's actually a little too far in there. Yeah, that's about where it wants to sit at. So yeah, that looks pretty good. I roughed up the area with some uh, 40 grit just so my fiberglass that I put in there is going to get some really good bite and I even ran some tape around the edge because this fiberglass sticks to everything. I don't really want to stick into here. This is just going to need regular um, body filler. Um, Alright, let's clean the area up and mix up some filler. We got our bumper looking so much more flush. Uh, it feels pretty good. I've roughed up this area too. It's been sitting in bare metal for a while. I should have primed it. I didn't think I'd be this long not working on it. I meant to prime it, but it is what it is. I roughed it up just to get any surface rust off of it. Now I can go start applying mud to this bad boy. Um, like I said, I shouldn't need much. It's a little low up here. Um, this edge needs to be taken care of. Um, a little low in here. Definitely need to take care of this edge in here. 
down there is at a couple low spots. Really, this thing was crushed in like this, and you can tell that I had to pull it completely out. There was holes that needed to be welded up from the original body kit that covered this whole thing. It was molded. Um, all that's taken care of now, so it should only need you know a couple coats of uh, filler. Maybe I can get lucky and put one heavy coat on, and then put my skim coat on, and uh, we should be good to go. First coat of mud on. Um, I'm not a pro at um, spreading it whatsoever, um, but what I do try to do is try to make it as smooth as possible. First off, it makes it sand easier, and the smoother you have it, the better you have it applied, uh, the better it sands um, to make it level. If you have a high spot here and a low spot there, you're going to be sanding the high spot and the low spot at the same time um, and it just makes it sand uneven all the way down. So the smoother you have it in the beginning, the better chance that it's going to level out when you block it. got a uh, couple coats of mud on there um, I did two um, just cuz the first coat um, I felt like I just need a little bit more to really blend it in um, and as you can see I you can see where I kind of like sanded through it to get to it um, not that thick so but it definitely took a little bit to get the whole panel feeling somewhat straight um, one thing I did forget is when I got the chance to repair this quarter panel, like this is the time to roll, um, you know, your quarters. And that means uh, what you do is you got this little lip here from the factory where they pinch weld the uh, where they pinch weld the uh, quarter together with the inner quarter. Um, <clears throat> now's the time to roll that in, or what I do is hammer it flat, uh, just in case I get a bigger tire in here. You know, um, this won't hit it. I could fit uh, as wide as a tire as this outer panel will let me fit. So um, I need to take that chance and roll this now because if I were to try to roll that um, whenever I put a tire on there, there's a good chance that I'll crack the paint. And when rolling, you know, it's never perfect. It always puts like a little wave here and there. They're not real noticeable, but it's just best to do it now while I'm, you know, muddying up this quarter. So. I'm gonna jack it up, take the wheel off. Um, and then my final coat of mud, I'm gonna go on, that I'm gonna put on here. I'm actually gonna roll it into the bumper a little bit. This bumper feels pretty good, but it just doesn't feel perfect. And uh, right now is the, uh, I have the opportunity to make it fit really perfect. Um, it'll probably look better than OEM, which is good. Uh, that's one good thing about fiberglass is that you can just buzz it down and put mud right over it. Um, a plastic bumper, when you buzz it down, the plastic will actually like fuzz up a little bit and look like crap. So, all right, let's jack it up, get this wheel off, and uh, beat on this thing.
we got um, turn some light on here uh, we got it rolled pretty good the problem with rolling Supras is right here molding attaches so when you get close to here you can throw the position of this off which we don't want to because when that molding is on there it's going to be off and uh, same thing for uh, right here this mounts to this edge if I keep beating on this edge pulling this it's going to throw the alignment of this panel off but here's the main part I'm not going to put anything stupid wide on this thing maybe a set of slicks or something and they still might rub I'm okay with a little bit of rubbing rubbing is racing but I just don't want the whole chewing my tire up and seeing it go down the side of the car rubbing so that is good enough and of course it did chip up the body filler and stuff like that so I gotta apply a little bit more um, I'm gonna apply some on the rear bumper too so we can get that straightened up and then uh, hopefully that stands out really good and then I can put a nice big coat of top coat over the whole thing We got some uh, filler sanded on this thing. Uh, we got quite a bit of filler on here. As you can see, blocking it down, it's got me really close to the metal so it shows it's not too thick. I had to put a little bit of filler up here because of me rolling the quarter over here with a hammer. Um, and I put a little bit of filler on the bumper. Uh, so all this is looking pretty good. Next step is to put a final coat of filler. What we're gonna put on here is metal glaze. Metal glaze is really smooth, really thin, but it ties this whole thing together. And I can sand it with finer grit sandpapers, which is best to use before I prime. So let's get on it. All right, here's a little trick that I do. Um, what I did here, um, I needed to find this body line. And on these Supras, the body line is, they're really strong and then they slowly disappear. And then this body line kicks in. So what I did here is I covered this whole thing in guide coat. Guide coat is this dark stuff. And what that does is when you start sanding, it starts showing you all the high and low spots. So it just gives you an idea what your uh, filler is starting to look like. So um, I did that, then um, I guide coated again. So, uh, and then I ran a tape line right where I wanted my body line to be at. And then I sand it again. And what the tape line does is it protects the body line from even being touched. So it creates this edge on there that you can barely see it. Um, but then you guide coat it again and then um, you take the tape off and then you work the edge down um, because it's going to be sharp you smooth it out a little bit and then it gives you your body line so right here it comes in a little bit 
um, here so I need to push it that way a little bit so I'll just start sanding this a little flatter um, but it, it definitely tells me exactly where my body line is at. Alright, so we got this uh, skim coat sanded down pretty good and um, as you can see our body line looks pretty good from the bumper to the quarter. It could use some tightening up here, I'm going to decide whether I want to do that. And it almost looks too perfect at the bottom, OEM isn't that perfect, so I might smooth it out like a little bit, but um, overall it looks pretty good. The mud work feels pretty damn straight. I use a bunch of different varieties of blocks. I use these um, Dura blocks for like rounder areas because you can see that they actually have some flex to them. And then for the straight parts, I just got these. Uh, my buddy Lewis brought them over and I've been borrowing them. But these are actually made of plexiglass and they don't, they barely have any give. So those are for like really, really flat areas. Uh, then we got a couple foam ones and of course, you know, I fold a piece of paper in half to do a lot too. And then you can get pretty solid bodywork out of it. So, all right, I am going to prep this thing for primer. I'll probably mess with this edge, this gap a little bit once um, I figure out how to actually mount the uh, bumper. Right now I got a temporary fix on it. And, uh, and yeah, get some primer on this thing and uh, keep rolling. We got this thing uh, taped up. Um, I did a little bit of filler work on the edge here. It looked kind of funky. Um, just beat up from pulling it so much. This looks really good. I made sure I put the paper pretty far back in here so I can run the spray gun in there and uh, get this edge really, really well. So probably should back tape that. Uh, bumper. <coughs> Bumper looks like a mess. I'm really just focused on this edge. The rest of it feels really wavy. And even down here where I sectioned it so many times feels wavy. I need to go over this bumper and just concentrate on it. But as of right now, I'm just going to prime what I got and I'll come back to it later because I'm going to have to mess with this side when I do that side. So, um, so like I said, I'll just get the whole bumper done all at once later. But for now, we'll prime what we got. So, all right, let's get some uh, let's get some primer on this.
got a couple pinholes here and there. Even my body work over here has a couple pinholes, but you know, it's just stuff to take note of and then fix it right before paint. Of course, it's 40 degrees in here and I gotta have my heat lamp running to warm this metal up. All right, there she is. She looks pretty good. The body line looks pretty good. It disappears and comes back in, goes along with the bumper. Uh, I got a ton of room in here now. So who knows what kind of tire I can put in there. My bumper gap looks pretty good. Um, I need to work on it a little bit more up here. That's no problem, this, this job isn't over. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Tail light gap looks good. That tail light gap looks good. All right, all my cameras are screaming at me. I'm running out of memory card room, so I know I got a big video to edit. So I'm gonna go and do that and get that video out to you. So I'm not done with the Supra. The next couple days, I'm actually gonna work on this whole side. I need to realign this door. Fender is off a of hair. And I have talked to a few friends about getting this thing running. I know the codes that it's throwing. We think it might be a distributor issue. A crank's fine. So, but I, I just, I wanna get it running. This isn't the motor that I'm gonna run with this car. But I've been pushing this thing around the shop by myself for weeks, and I'm tired of it. I at least need a running car to move around. So, anyways, if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe and catch videos like this every single week. And if you are subscribed, thanks, and I'll see you all next week.